All right, um, so my name is Brandon Miner, and I'd like to share a story about the virtue of memory. Not that I really have much of one, to be honest. Mine is pretty poor. Um, so Sherlock Holmes from the BBC program has what he likes to call a mind palace that he used to hold information important to an investigation, while I like to say that I have more of a mind pantry, which gives you an ability, I mean, that's what I think. But the problem of memory has never really been a problem for me. Again, not because I have much of one, because I just never really use it. I mean, Facebook tells me the birthdays of my closest friends, Google Maps tells me where to go, and even on an academic level, Wikipedia will tell me all the facts I would ever want to know. So if knowledge flows as quickly as it takes a server to load my web page, why would I or anyone else I know, you know, care about memory? Well, I can't answer that question for you, but I can say definitively that memory changed my life for the better very recently. So to go into that backstory, I founded a company three years ago based on this concept of monocular slam, which uses a camera and some geometry to create a 3D reconstruction of a scene. So through various connections here in Boulder, that company was, got the attention of a larger one, and before you know it, we were the product of an acquisition. So <laughs> my three co-founders and I went through the usual due diligence and some interviews that go with that, but while they did wonderfully, I did not. In fact, my interview went so poorly that the entirety of the acquisition's integrity was at, in jeopardy. I mean, during that interview, I forgot everything. The programming, the mathematics, the computer vision, everything I had based my company on, my mind was completely blank for an hour and a half. So I called up the two co-founders of the acquiring company and had the most humble conversation of my life. Yes, I had done very poorly, but I wanted another chance. And amazingly, they gave it to me. In two weeks' time from that, I would have another interview in the form of implementing a computer vision algorithm, any algorithm chosen at their discretion. What this meant for me was that I had to not only learn, but memorize and recall every computer vision algorithm I can get my hands on. So there are many amazing techniques to do this, one of them being Sherlock's Mind Palace, actually a real thing, but I used none of them. Instead, I got my textbooks and all my paper and just copied everything word for word over and over and over and over and over and over in a mental game of Simon. It was mentally exhausting, and to make it worse, my emotions were bookended by my very recent failures <laughs> and my future opportunities, which made everything have a sense of desperation to it. However, that being said, I actually did begin to see some things happening. So even though this time was not spent building skill necessarily, but building recall, I found that through this recall, I was beginning to find connections between knowledge I had already just gained. I began to understand really the why and not just the how of the science that I had based my future on. And it was through this very relevatory experience that I finally realized what I was missing in that first interview. So anyway, a very emotional two weeks came and went, and the interview date arrived. I was to implement a version of the Lucas Kanade algorithm, a computer vision classic, using a seemingly random series of data, and not only show an implementation, but a factual correct solution. So though before the beginning of this interview, I had really seen memory as an option, it was not something you put import in unless you had a dumb phone. And even if you put memory into it, it really was redundant at this point in time. And I hate to play the millennial card here, but I think it's really important because it's one of the like, pretexts of my generation. We don't really need the minutia anymore because we can just surf the information superhighway whenever we want. However, my experience has taught me better. I know now that knowledge is so much more rich and connected when you have memory to guide it, it's amazing. And when people make the argument that memory is a non-essential because of the times we live in, I just look at my own story. So the interview took me three hours. And as soon as I got out, I text my other co-founders that I had done it. I had actually passed the test. The feeling wasn't success necessarily, but relief, an intense relief. And due to memory, I can happily say that on October 21st, 2015, my company is acquired. And as of today, I will never forget. Thank you very much.